is doing. So what do you think of having the community health center here? I think it's great. It's fantastic. What about the parking? Good location. Oh, there's parking. More parking than there was in the last place. That's true. So what do and you think? There's th a parking garage right over there. Right over there. And uh, the Metadon, that's... Uh, you think, do, do, do you think there's a drug problem in the city? Uh, of course there's a drug problem. Of course there is. There's an alcohol problem too. Alcohol, drugs. Alcohol is even wor a worse problem than the drug problem. Mental problems. Yeah. You're and talking that, to one that's holding that, the camera that's right why, now. That's why, that's why I, was, I was surprised to see in the budget there's no change in the money available for the addiction services. It's still the same. Same day. It's just frozen, stuck. So it's not, I mean, they closed the Sarah Tracy Center um, uh, for addiction treatment, and uh, that was a perfect opportunity to put a little bit extra money in there and get it back open and running, help people out. What have you learned? Walking. What have you I'm learned? <laughs> what have you learned since you've been uh, in MLA? How long have you been in MLA now? Almost over two years. Two years over, and. Over two years. Oh, two years and four months. Oh, by the way, this is David Kuhn, leader of the uh, Green Party. Uh, no, people that don't know. So, uh, what did you learn? And the MLA for Fredericton. The MLA for Fredericton South. Yeah, 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 yeah. You be we're, we're in Fredericton South. You will be there for a long we're time. Always in Fredericton South. Yeah, exactly. Always, always Fredericton South. So, what are we going to do? What What did you learn about MLA being in MLA so far? I've learned a lot. One of the things I learned is that you've got to do something to change the way the Department of Social Development operates so like what? it can be more effective, so can more effectively help people. Maybe one, uh, maybe one thing they could do is move that damn office from the highest peak of the city to downtown where people could go so and the, talk to the caseworker. So the location is definitely a huge issue. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So it's economic uh, unit policy where people are trying to make the dollar go a little further and live together. share an apartment. That needs to be gone. I thought that change. <laughs> well, there's exemptions. So for single mothers, yes, you can do it. But for other, so there's exemptions, but it's still in place. The, the, the guilty until proven innocent strategy, which mm. is, you know, if they someone makes a complaint about someone on social assistance, they get cut off while they investigate. They still do that? And, uh, yeah. Do they? They get cut off. And so you have no chance really to defend yourself. Um, before you're cut off, and then you can go through a review and defend yourself. And you can't even get up there. You don't have money to take a cab to go there. So maybe the review will work out in your favor, but in the meantime, you've lost. Starve. Your you lose everything. Income. Uh, and if your if your review doesn't go in your favor, you can go to appeal. And what I learned was 25% of people on appeal are reinstated. And they go all the way to appeal. So those 25% of the people at a time have had no income. And, and Does that happen a lot? And you, yeah, and you lose your, you know, you lose. You mean that that that's like Crime Stoppers, like Michel Viano and Batters. They called Michel Viano got some cocaine. Next day, you know, the cops go at Via Rail and shot him dead. Is it the same thing as social assistant? You just uh, call and say, well, that person is frauding you, and they just cut him off, or just like that, well, he or she? I don't know what precipitates it, but my my point is, my point is that people shouldn't simply be cut off before the appeal process. Yeah. They should be presumed innocent until guilty. Did you bring that up in, in, and, in the house? Yes, okay. repeatedly. Did you? Yes. I, I gotta start listening to bullshit, <laughs> bullshit question, I mean, uh, question so period. it's incredible, because what happens? People lose the ability, so you, you don't get, you can't buy food, you can't buy, med you lose your health card, so you can't get your medication. If You're screwed. You, if you have a prescription, you might lose your apartment. Yeah, of course. You pay the rent. If you've got kids and you lose your apartment, you might lose your kids. So it creates this downward spiral. And uh, so when that happens, it precipitates a crisis every time. And, I hear and, you. and don't even get me started on, you know, that's just whether or not you actually broke the rules or not. But then you look at what the rules are and you say, well, how is anyone supposed to live with those rules? I haven't heard from my caseworker in years. I don't even know who that caseworker is. Yeah, keep walking. Because... Yeah, yeah. One more thing. Uh, uh, the rules. What the hell would you... Uh... Um, t -t 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 oh my Here's god. My, my latest favorite one, if you're living in public housing. Oh yeah, that's a, before I forget, before I forget. What? Public housing, you go to jail for a month, you lose your housing? I don't know 
Is that what happened? Uh, that's what I heard. That's why. No one's, okay. no one's come to me with that yet. I will. Trust me. They're, <laughs> they're working very hard on that. Uh, what about public housing? Oh, well, so they've been charging for every little thing. So, so I have a constituent who lost her key to her building, and they charged her 40 bucks to open the door for her. Why? Because they don't have superintendents in the public housing in the apartments anymore. Five years ago, they took all the superintendents out of the public housing buildings. So there's no superintendent. If you had a superintendent, you lost your key, you could just buzz them and they come and open the door for you. Now, you have 40 bucks to get someone to open the door for you and then 50 bucks to replace your key. These are the stories bad you're hearing here in Fredericton. Can you imagine living in St. John? Yeah, I keep thinking that every time I go to St. John. I know. I know, and this is Fredericton. You go to St. John where the poverty rates are through the roof. Oh yeah, the South End, and uh, yeah. when they say soup kitchen, they're not kidding. Yeah. Romero House, yeah. and uh, you might get a second meal on Friday, you yeah. might. Yeah. Here, we're treated like kings. Anyway. We'll okay, on. thank you. Yeah, yeah, we keep on walking, it's, it's all right. I don't mind. Yeah, 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 we haven't met the less fortunate yet. But no, no, how about the justice system? Are you, are you going to educate yourself on that? Legal aid so and legal aid. summary, so, kind of, everybody's charged so. with summary, summary, summary. No right to a lawyer, no preliminary hearing, force you to plead guilty. So there are a couple of things with the justice system I've really been educating myself about. Trying, have you? Trying to push, and one is the, the, the legal aid system we have, which is crappy. It sucks. Use so, the word, the right word, sucks. No, I don't, it's crappy. It sucks. It sucks. I know, go ahead. So just com compare it to other provinces similar to ours in the, uh, in the Maritimes or even Atlantic Canada, it's terrible. Yeah. So, once again, the budget for that didn't change. Of course not. So they're triaging people, which they have to. Yeah. And there's good people in there working there. I met yeah. them. But they're triaging people, so that, which is not a good thing. And then the scope of what's available is, is very narrow, so it doesn't serve a lot of people who need it. So, there you go. And then, well, the other, another thing that's interesting to me, I think it needs to change, is is how every kid is, is transported in shackles, you know, as, as young as 12 years old, uh, whether or not they pose a danger. Right? It's just automatic routine. Yeah, that's true. Why would you put a kid in shackles? You mentally screw them why for would, life. Right, so exactly. So why, then, you, then you're wondering how come kids hate cops. So why wouldn't you put a kid in shackles unless you could prove they're actually, you know, going to be a um, danger? You, you, the old saying is so true. You're saved by the bell. I uh, am. Yeah. Thank you very much. You gotta talk to my wife. <laughs> oh, your wife? Oh my God! Talk to the wife. Don't, don't, don't fool around with me. Holy Jesus.